So this is the um, last session today. Um, and I, I will say at this point, oh, actually I can show you that um, nice big uh, graphic again of where you're up to in the, in the process. Um, so you see here RR compression, that's reduced reads compression. Um, at this point, really, you, know, you are at a, a stage with your BAM file where you're ready for calling in most cases. Um, if you are working with a couple samples, just a tumor and a normal or just small project, at this point you can get up out of the room, go have lunch, enjoy the, uh, the food trucks outside. Um, however, if you are like many of the people at the Broad with larger projects with hundreds, even thousands, tens of thousands of samples, you have to stay in your seats and, and hit this last part or you're in big trouble. Um, okay, so what is the motivation here? Why do you, what, what, what is the big problem that we're trying to address? These BAM files are very large. They're huge. Whole genome um, BAM files are about 300 gigs. The, the exomes, it says 10 gigs here, but they're more like 20 actually, I, I find. Um, and if you have thousands of them, you get into the, the, you know, the, te the terabyte range. So for 1,000 genomes, for example, we have 100 terabytes of data. Um, that's a lot of data to be storing. There's a lot of data to be reading off of disk. And if you don't have the BAM files locally, that's a lot of data to be transferring. Okay? So it's a big issue. So what we've done is, um, is we've added a, a, a very localized compression technique. Um, it's specific to the JTK and for our analysis that that drastically compresses the BAM, the, the BAM sizes. So the files are much smaller and much more usable and user-friendly inside the JTK so that you can actually uh, do these larger projects with thousands of samples. So there's a, Ami, who we talked earlier, um, recently did some calling with 26,000 exomes. And now they're working on, I think, 60,000 samples. So we're, uh, we're at the stage where we're really pushing a lot of data across the networks. And with small BAM sizes, we can do this. With larger BAM sizes, we can't. Okay, so I mean, here's an example of, of how much faster it is. So what are those, all those fun, funky green lines? So this is like the before, the uncompressed version, and this is the compressed. And we've broken up the, G, the exome or into lots of different pieces, and we've run our collar, which we'll learn about tomorrow, on each one of those pieces. And each one of these horizontal lines is how long it took in minutes for that, that piece to complete the calling, okay? And this is, if you notice, these lines are much larger than these lines. Because with a lot of data, which uncompressed, it takes longer to pull it across the network and then analyze it in, in memory. And with these are much smaller pieces here. So they're all equivalent. These are the same pieces lined up here. That makes sense? Okay, so you're doing things a lot faster this way. So if you want speed and less, uh, and less cost to you for storage, stay here and listen on. Okay, so what is the, what is the point here? Um, this is a typical BAM file. Yeah, it's a single sample, and you see all these reads. Now notice in this block over here, there's no color. You know color is, is mismatches to the reference. Well, there's no color here. We know there's no SNPs here. There's not, it's not very interesting information, really. It, you know, Ryan, I talked about the VCF file, and you'll learn about calling tomorrow. Uh, that's um, detection and discovery of mutations. But you see there's no mutations here. It's all very clean. So this is, not, this is not a lot. We don't need to store all this data when we actually go for, for calling, for the discovery. So what we can do is we can collapse all this into one little, basically, number for each, one, each position. You see the same thing over here. Now, these regions here, there's a lot of mismatches. And those could be SNPs. Those could be errors. Who knows what they are? But we have to keep that data around because the, we have to send this into a statistical caller, which you'll learn about tomorrow, um, for analysis. Okay, so we have sections where all the reads agree and sections where the reads don't necessarily all agree. So we've put together this compression algorithm that takes, that takes advantage of that. And what it does is it finds these variable regions, regions where there's the there reads that disagree with the reference or with each other, and regions that are consensus, where all the reads at a given position have the same base. And that's important, because if they're all the same base, we can collapse them down into a single representative base, this magical base. Um, and we keep kind of a window around these variable regions just to make sure if there are hidden indels, let's say the indel realigner wasn't perfect and there was a larger event, we just want to make sure we, did, we don't lose sight of those things. So we kind of keep a window around these variable regions. Um, and we actually what we do is we don't even collapse around indels at all because those are much harder to represent. But you can, these are all user tunable thresholds, which is the nice thing. Okay. Um, the, the, the important, oh, sorry, let's go back. I, I just want to point out that tumor and normal samples would be compressed together because you don't want them just like, so 
with indel realignment, you can also um, realign tumors and normals together, which you want to do, because you want them to have a com consistent and complete picture of the genome together. You'd also want them to be compressed together, because you don't want one of them compressed in a region and the other one not compressed. Those should be as consistent as possible, and this, this tool allows you to do that. You can also do that with non-cancer uh, samples, but really this is a one single sample tool. You don't really want to do this over many samples. Okay. So here's a, a toy BAM file. This is, not, this is not real. I'll show you a real screenshot at the end. Um, but, but in this BAM, you see all this, these orange things are those gray reeds. They're just colored so, make them see, so you can see them better. And here, this looks like a homozygous SNP. That right? And here's another homozygous SNP. Here, there's some sort of deletion. There's a heterozygous SNP and another heterozygous SNP, and lots of reference sites in between. Okay? So you can collapse that down. You don't really care about all this information here. This is collapsed into a single representative read. And this is thousands of bases long. And you notice this SNP here? Well, this base is still consistent. Even though it mismatches the reference, all the reads themselves match each other. So that's a SNP right there, and that's a SNP right there. All that information has been pushed into one single read. And the read itself has information that tells you the original coverage and some sort of uh, representation of the quality over that position. Okay? Notice these regions here where you have the deletions and the SNPs, the heterozygous SNPs, sorry. Those things haven't been collapsed down. Those are still the original reads. Okay? And that's why we haven't lost that information. So it's necessary for the caller. What's the threshold for that? That's, again, user, user tunable, but it's, it's low. I mean, it, it's, I think if 5% you know, or more of the reads mismatch by default, then, then it won't uh, collapse them down. But again, if you are dealing with tumors and normals, you might want that to be 10%, 15%. Okay. Um, so again, here's kind of a, a closer view. And I'm going to show you actually, it, it's even better than this, but this is kind of, again, our toy example. So here's the, these heterozygous sites. There's a SNP and a deletion right here. And those regions are just kept as normal. And then you have these other regions that are collapsed down to one read. And this, again, it doesn't really look like this in the BAM file. I'll show you a much cooler, cooler example afterwards. Okay, so what do you have to do to run it? It's totally vanilla and easy. You can't get easier than this. You have your original BAM file, run it through reduced reads, and you have your compressed version, and that is simply this. Like, it doesn't get easier than this. This is, could be like the easiest GTK command there is. Reduce reads, reference, input, output. All right? Yay. It used to be a lot more, a lot more difficult, but we, we got rid of all the, uh, the fluff. Okay, so. Now that you have your compressed BAM file, what does it really look like? Okay. This here is, I love this example. So this is NA12878, one of our most famous samples. And this is about 1,200 bases long here. Okay. So it's over a kilobase of long. So there's tens of thousands of reads here. You see there's a homozygous SNP here, heterozygous SNP, and some homozygous SNPs over here. Okay. So 1,200 base pairs worth of reads, tens of thousands of reads, get collapsed into six reads. Right? This here is an 800 base pair read here with your homozygous SNP. Here's another long read here with your, I, I can't point well, with more homozygous SNPs. And your heterozygous SNP actually gets collapsed into four representative reads. Two reads in either direction for the reference allele, and two reads in either, oops, oh man, I keep doing that. And two reads in either direction for the alt, with the alt, that show the alternate allele. Okay? And you want to do this because the directionality is important for finding error covariates, which we'll discuss again tomorrow. So you don't want to lose the, the directionality of it. Yep? It is a true, well-formed BAM file. Um, IGB just happens to know that it's reduced. Um, it, ha it looks for the RR tag inside the read, and it, you know, it, it, it just it shows you that information, but it doesn't really treat reduced reads any differently than any other ones. They are true, proper reads. Um, the, the number of reads that you reduce BAM, then go on to affect So it does not. So, or what I should say that, oh, uh, the question, this is, it was a very good question. So given that we've collapsed down this, this read right here, does that now affect the calling? Does it affect the annotations and the filtering approaches later on? does not because we have all the information stored in this read that we will need for downstream processes. So we know what the original depth was. The read is just smart enough to keep it. But instead of storing it 10,000 different times with a depth of one, each read would say, I'm this read with depth one. This is now, I'm 10,000 re 10, reads worth of depth at this position. It's not, it actually has a tag here. It says, at this position, I had original depth of n. 
okay? And my, and you know, a consistent quality score for each one of those reads. And a mapping quality associated with those reads also. Okay, and there, there, there might be, you know, unmapped reads down here also. And those are represented, those are collapsed down. Okay, so we don't actually lose any information here. And again, the, the, more, the, the, hardest, the hardest parts are the indels and heterozygous SNPs, and those are also the most errorful ones, and those, those are really maintained. I keep doing that, sorry. Any other questions? Okay, good. So how do we know that it worked? Well, first of all, your RAM file should be a lot smaller, okay, which is a good thing. If it's not smaller, you've definitely done something wrong. You have a deletion at every single base. I don't know, what, whatever happened in the original RAM file is not good. You should go back and start again from scratch. Um, the other piece, I mean, things should run a lot faster. Um, you'll notice that, that, that the, you know, the, if you actually take a look at some of the reads inside the BAM file with SAM tools, you'll see that they're really stripped down. And there's only really two tags. There's the, well, you have the bases, the base qualities, and then a depth. That's pretty much all it is. Okay? Um, and then you could actually run it through uh, our diagnosed targets, which is really depth of coverage. And you'd see that the original coverage is almost exactly the same as now the reduced coverage because reduced read has a, has, a, has a coverage associated with each position. Okay, so there's really no difference. And that's it. Okay, so simple piece. You have lots of, pro lots of samples. You'll definitely want to use the, this tool. Reduce them all singly, and then you have now analysis-ready BAMs, which all go into tomorrow's session. Questions? Yep. Uh, so, Okay, that's a, okay, so the question was, do the other callers recognize it? This is a GATK specific analysis band. This is not, first of all, it's not an archival, you've lost information, you definitely have. So I should point out that this is not an archival copy of the BAM. This is what we call like the analysis, that's what Ryan calls it, or the active BAM, right? So other callers do not necessarily recognize reduced BAMs. They'll treat them as single reads because they don't look at the reduced tag. Mutech is um, almost an exception. Mutech is written in the GATK. However, it's like one full version back, one major version back. So uh, it's not up to date yet. I doubt it will work with reduced, with reduced reads, but we're working with those guys now to get them into the 21st century. So hopefully they will be able to do this kind of soon. Okay. Um, the truth is the cancer pipe, I don't know. I actually don't know. I shouldn't, they, maybe it does it, use it now, but if not, it will look soon. They do not. Okay, thank you, Ami. They do not use it yet. How much are the BAM sizes reduced? So the question was, how much compression? So we're finding about uh, a, so the BAM sizes are about 1 50th the size. If you really want to turn the knobs, you can make it about a hundredth of the size, but we didn't really need to because now at this point, with the default compression, which is again 1 50th the size, we're talking about megabyte, megabytes now instead of you know, gigabytes. So the whole project is get, you know, maybe one terabyte instead of 100 terabytes, um, two terabytes, whatever now, so it's nothing. And uh, that's what we're finding. So about 1 50th the size, sometimes even smaller. It, again, if you have a messed up BAM file to start with, it's not going to compress well, but that's, you know, that's an exception. Yep. Though, uh, so are you, I, I have to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure I understand. You just show us, like, you have a thousand three, and then you have one read. Yeah. Then you hit here, you hit the number of how many reads has to be there. Yeah. Well, it's not, I mean, you're, you're saying it, every, you need memory for what? For when you call? Uh, for, this is all in the BAM file. Uh, for, you need to have information on exactly how you call each place here. That's the last read. Yes, e each read here. So this read has, again. Yeah, and not currently you give one byte. So the truth is, so one thing that was, that was I kind of glanced, uh, kind of glossed over, is that it does some downsampling also. The, you don't, at this, so once you have, 100x, 200x coverage, you don't, it doesn't matter that, that you have more than that. So this does downsampling also. So you can still represent each piece in a byte because it's all relative. It doesn't matter, there's technical de details, but you can represent each position's depth in a byte. 
Uh, no, first of all, it's all, always positive, so you can double that, right? And, and again, it's all relative. So, so you can actually, you can double that. So you can get about 500x there. Uh, can I actually, can I, can, it's okay, I recommend, maybe let's break for lunch and why don't you come and ask technical questions here because I don't hear you so, so well, unfortunately. And I think this is a very technical uh, question. Um, anything else before we break? Yeah, well, no, this oh. compression works for RNA-seq purpose, meaning downstream. Uh, uh, RNA-seq, let's just say, it, it, I don't see why it wouldn't, but let's say uh, RNA-seq has its own issues um, because of the big gaps. So. I will not answer positively yet until I, uh, I would like further uh, analysis before I say yes. Yep. It would be, it's a percentage, if 5%, it's actually, it uses some statistical, you know, mathematics to figure out, it's not really a, a you know, blanket percentage, but it uses the base qualities, but let's just say, for all intents and purposes, it's a percentage. So. If enough high quality bases mismatch all the other ones, it will, they will not collapse down. But you'll still get the four way compression, which is still not so bad. So the question here is, is it really used for variant calling versus coverage analysis? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I mentioned that this is, this analysis ready, this analysis BAM is a GTK specific thing. It's for the calling. You can still do uh, coverage analysis, but, if, but again, you're downsampling here with this BAM. So if you care about the exact original coverages at, per position, you would want to run depth of coverage first before collapsing it down. Or you'd run it on the original BAM file. Make sense? If you're, just, if you're looking for the com confidently referenced sites, you can still do that with a collapse spam. All right, any other questions, you feel free to come down and talk to me right now. <laughs>